2016 was quite the mixed bag for WWE. Vince McMahon was desperately trying to get us all to cheer for Roman Reigns. The women's division was making history across the year. And Triple H told a certain wrestler that they should knock out one of the creative team. So with all of that in mind, I'm Andrew from What Culture Wrestling. And here are 10 fascinating facts about WWE in 2016. Number 10. Roman Reigns broke a 26-year streak. Some might forget that the Royal Rumble had zero ties to WrestleMania until 19. 19- 1993, or that the Rumble winner didn't get anything of tangible value until 1992. So, when the authority put Roman Reigns in the 2016 Royal Rumble, that broke a 26-year streak that made Roman the first reigning WWE champion to compete in a Rumble since Hulk Hogan all the way back in 1990. Likewise, this was the first time since Ric Flair won the 1992 Rumble, the greatest Royal Rumble of all time, of course, that the WWE title was actually on the line in a Royal Rumble match. From 1993 onwards, the Rumble was used to set up who'd be challenging for the company's top title at WrestleMania. In 2016, though, WWE bucked that long-standing trend by having Roman Reigns defend his title against 29 other men, with Triple H walking out as a new WWE champion on that particular night. Number 9. WWE didn't tell AJ Styles anything. One of the true highlights of 2016 was AJ Styles' WWE debut at that year's Royal Rumble. But while you might think WWE would have had concrete plans in place for the phenomenal one, that was far from the case. As Styles has revealed in various interviews over the years, WWE didn't really have any plans for him during his early days with the company. So much so, AJ didn't even know if he was going to be working the Rumble match when Samoa Joe picked him up from the airport that morning. For P1, his first few months with WWE were pieced together quietly, including his WrestleMania 32 match against Chris Jericho. This being despite WWE knowing in mid-January that AJ Styles was coming in. Still, it's a testament to AJ's work that he impressed enough to become WWE Champion by September of that year. Number 8. Batista was supposed to work WrestleMania 32. Having met with Vince McMahon at the 2016 Royal Rumble, Batista was penciled in to beat down the League of Nations at WrestleMania 32 alongside Steve Austin, Mick Foley and Shawn Michaels. However, due to big day shooting Guardians of the Galaxy 2, those plans had to be totally scrapped. Interestingly, this was at a time when Batista was still frustrated over his 2014 return, where he was made somewhat of a scapegoat for WWE's reluctance to go all in on Daniel Bryan. Also, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon had annoyed the animal by mocking his chances of making it in Hollywood, because obviously, Trips had classics like The Chaperone in his own back catalogue. Number 7. The first women's WrestleMania match to exceed 10 minutes. It's pretty nuts to look back on, but Becky Lynch versus Sasha Banks versus Charlotte Flair was the first women's match in WrestleMania history to go past the 10 minute mark, clocking in at 16 minutes and 3 seconds as the ladies battled for the new women's title. Prior to that, Mickie James versus Trish Stratus at WrestleMania 22 was the longest match in the event's rich history, going approximately 9 minutes. Technically, a 10 woman tag on the WrestleMania 32 pre-show breached the 10 minute mark first, going just over 11 minutes, but that wasn't on the main card, so doesn't really count here. Though the branding of WWE's women's revolution started in 2015, things didn't really get going until the following year. Number 6. Dean Ambrose called out Brock Lesnar's laziness. Dean Ambrose's appearance on Steve Austin's WWE Network show in 2016 is a gloriously awkward car crash that simply has to be seen. And one of the bigger talking points coming out of that appearance was the nowadays John Moxley calling out Brock Lesnar for their clunky scrap at WrestleMania 32. Ambrose talked about his frustrations about not getting to do all of the super hardcore violence violent stuff he wanted, noting he was met with laziness when trying to lay out the no-holds-barred match with Brock beforehand. Since then, Paul Heyman hinted during the Q&A tour that Brock was simply ticked off with Ambrose's attitude going into that match. Clearly, there was some disconnect between the two men, as Brock had done some hardcore stuff before, such as against John Cena at Extreme Rules 2012, so clearly the Beast Incarnate just wasn't feeling it when working with Dean Ambrose. Still, hearing Ambrose bitch about Brock so publicly was eye-opening back in 2016. Number 5. Charlotte Flair's Scrap Hell in a Cell moonsault. Vince McMahon went back and forth on the finish to Charlotte Flair versus Sasha Banks at Hell in a Cell 2016. Originally, Sasha was supposed to win, but as was so often the case, that plan changed, pal, on the day of the event. Plus, Vince had to be talked into letting the match headline the pay-per-view by Triple H and other company officials. But while Sasha versus Charlotte did close out Hell in a Cell, two major spots were scrapped from that match. One of those spots remains a mystery, but the other, well, Charlotte was going to do a death-defying moonsault from the top of the cage, as revealed 
revealed by Ric Flair during a busted open appearance shortly after the pay-per-view, with the Nature Boy suggesting Vince himself made the call to cancel that spot, which, let's face it, was likely for the best, given the major injury risk that would present for both Charlotte and Sasha Banks. Number 4. Finn Balor was meant to get Roman Reigns' push. Oh, what might have been for Finn Balor? With Roman Reigns temporarily demoted to the upper mid-card after being suspended for a wellness policy violation in June, Finn Balor was to be the main beneficiary of this, winning the Universal title and planned to be the new face of Monday Night Raw. Of course, Balor got injured while winning that title at SummerSlam and had to vacate the belt the very next night. And with that, Finn's push was toast. It's also worth noting that another story from that period claimed Balor would have been eventually dethroned by Kevin Owens. But either way, Finn never really got the opportunity to show what he could do at the top of the mountain and as the face of a brand. Number 3. Brock Lesnar almost started a riot backstage. Oh, SummerSlam 2016, the event that ended with Brock Lesnar brutally busting open Randy Orton the hard way thanks to some seriously stiff elbows. A man, Chris Jericho, was pissed at what he thought was Brock taking liberties with Randy. So much so, the angry Jericho confronted Lesnar and went nose to nose with him backstage after the match, with Jericho even planning to bite off Brock's nose should the two properly get into it. And all of this was because Vince McMahon hadn't let anyone know that the very real strikes to Randy Orton were all agreed upon ahead of time. Now, Chris Jericho wasn't the only WWE star who wanted to know what Brock was doing in the match, but he certainly was the most vocal about it. Number 2. Triple H's NXT intro gets heat. In a bizarre scenario, Triple H gave his typical grand introduction at NXT TakeOver London, despite having been on the receiving end of a proper kicking at the hands of Roman Reigns just days earlier at the TLC pay-per-view. This was either WWE's left hand not talking to his right, or simply Trips didn't see the big issue with no selling one of the biggest angles in the company at the time. As a result, the Wrestling Observer reported that some people backstage questioned whether Triple H's NXT TakeOver cameo was really necessary. Even worse, Roman Reigns had taped a promo for that week's SmackDown claiming nobody had seen or heard from Triple H since TLC, which looked really daft when the game had already shown up in NXT before that particular SmackDown had aired. Of course, it could be that Vince McMahon just didn't think NXT would draw enough eyeballs to make this a problem, but that's also extremely counterproductive as you're essentially acknowledging that a product you're promoting isn't important enough to go along with the stories established on Raw or SmackDown. Yep, this whole situation was just odd whichever way you looked at it. Number 1. Triple H told Cody Rhodes to punch a writer. Surely nothing else from 2016 could possibly top this one. He may nowadays be one of the biggest stars in the company, some would argue the biggest star, but Cody Rhodes cut a frustrated figure back in 2016 as he kicked around as Stardust. As Cody explained on his American Nightmare documentary in 2023, a writer actually fake typed on a laptop rather than speaking to Cody backstage, causing Cody Rhodes to go off on a rant to others behind the curtain. And when he vented his anger to Triple H and said how he felt like punching that particular creative team member, Hunter actually told him that's exactly what he should do. Clearly, Triple H wouldn't offer that sort of advice to a WWE talent these days, what with the game now calling the shots, but that advice did get Cody to legitimately think about assaulting the writer in question. Rather than getting physical, Cody instead decided to leave the company, and he's now good friends with that same unnamed creative team member, having managed to put their drama behind them, with this writer not even knowing in 2016 that Cody was so mad about this whole situation, or that Triple H of all people had egged Cody on to throw a punch.